This show is brought to you by adamandeve.com. If you go to adamandeve.com right now and enter glory, the code word glory, G-L-O-R-Y, at checkout, you'll get 50% off almost any item, a free sex swing, and free shipping. Hey, Tom and Cecil. I just got back from Denmark where I took it upon myself to settle the great pastry debate once and for all. And I'm not even going to get into the a limiting a term Danishes, but let me uh, just set this aside once and for all when I say Danish. Glory hole. Hey, Tom and Cecil. This is Julia, and I was just checking my Facebook notifications today, and I saw that today was Tom's birthday, so... Um, I just want to say happy birthday. I love you guys. Glory Hall. Hey guys, I have a theory about the whole Space Force thing. Maybe uh, Trump was up late at night watching TV, saw a Star Trek rerun, thought it was a documentary, and figured if he had his own Space Force, maybe he could grab some of that green space pussy. So that's the only thing that makes sense. All right, Glory Hall. Hi, I was just listening to your episode with David Silverman, and he's absolutely right. Um, He's talking about how he wears atheist t-shirts all the time. I've had more compliments on my shirts. Like, I've got one of Jesus riding a T-Rex that's breathing fire, and he's wearing sunglasses. Everybody loves that shirt. Just this weekend, I had a waitress compliment me on that shirt and said, when I was done with it, could she have it? But anyways, I wanted to say, yeah, be out and proud. People love it. See you later. Glory hold. advise that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live. From Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode, we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome, Matt. This is episode 406. And Cecil, would you please fiddle my knob a little bit more over hey, there? buddy. Just tweak Look, that thing a little bit. We don't do sound check on the what, show. We what do I'm it looking while for, you're doing your I'm intro. looking for a, a little pinch and a pull. I'm just want a little did. pinch and a pull. I already did. I already did. And you finished. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want me to sound like that, you got to treat me right. That's all I'm saying. Later on in the show, we're going to have Mario Mutal, the author of the Tiny Thinker books. He's going to be on I later I thought he was that on. Italian chef. It's no? <laughs> did I get this mixed up again? The grabby oh. one? <laughs> Wait, is he? Did he get? Is, is he a grab? Yeah, grab yeah. He, he had to give up his restaurants. Really? Yeah. Mar- Wait, Mar- Mario Batelli. Mario Batelli. I'm gonna hold on. Look, He's a grabby we, Graberson. On. Give me a sec. I love it. I love it. You just type in Mario Batelli SC for scandal, and it's just scallops. Because <laughs> like, because I'll be honest for a minute, I was like, hey, click on that. I, <laughs> <laughs> Mario Batelli steps away from restaurant empire following sexual misconduct allegations. Four men accused a chef of inappropriate touching and a pattern of behavior. It spans at least two decades, according to dozens of Eater interviews. Wow. wow. Gosh. And, and it's just, what it is, is they, it's this company Eater is just going after him. They're attacking him. You know, <laughs> it's this coordinated attack by all these women. <laughs> at the same <laughs> time. Maybe if he had asked if he could eat her, oh, then Eater wouldn't be. Yeah. You got to get consent. <laughs> It's key. It's key. Because if your mouth deep in there and they're like, what are you doing? That's an awkward conversation. I feel like that would be a little weird. Awkward though. conversation. Like, I'm not sure how because you your get... mouth is full. Right. And so it's an awkward now conversation. Now is not the time for talking. We have we're, passed we're, the time we're, for we're, talking. We're, this can, isn't... You, can you make it talk to me? <laughs> I brought some googly eyes. You mind if I put some googly eyes down here? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Just a couple of pipe cleaners and googly eyes. I just, just want to say shapes. sexual harassment's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just say that out loud? Do we have to say that uh, out loud? It's funny because people scream at us when we don't, I, evidently. Yeah, it yeah. turns out if you only have 400 plus episodes talking about like, 
feminism and equality and women's rights. That's yeah. that's not enough. That's you have not to enough. specifically you have to address specifically say issues with people you've never fucking met. I don't think that's appropriate. You just be like, yeah, I don't think I don't think sexual harassment is ever appropriate. Can I ask you, Cecil, a genuine question? When should you sexually harass somebody? I don't, you know. There's a, you know, it's one of those thin line sort of things. I, guess. I don't know. It's so funny because I'm just like, yeah, like I never thought that was a good idea. Yeah. Can we, can we just, and why do you need the opinion of two guys who weren't involved in it? You know, like, why right. is it that you would need us to comment on something? Let, let me, let me just say for the record, like, I don't approve of anybody sexually harassing anyone in the past. If you're doing it right now, stop. And if you're thinking about doing it tomorrow don't. or otherwise in the future, don't <laughs> actually so hold, I feel like that covers my face. Hold your hand in front of you and smack it. Just smack <laughs> put your a, own hand. Put a rubber band yeah. on your dick yeah. and just pull it. Just snap snap it. Yeah. Snap it once. Actually, I'm going to do that. That sounds good. Anytime I, like I know while I'm different. listening to ASMR videos <laughs> <laughs> of rubber band snapping. Of rubber band snapping. It's weird. It's a whole thing now. <laughs> Biofeedback. <laughs> this is my thing. The only way. Yeah. Okay. Don't. This is a little weird. The only way I can get off is with this. Like paper boy, um, fucking rubber band, one of those little super hard, <laughs> angry ones. And I have to wear this newsboy cap. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you wear? Hold on, you and wear the newsboy cap. I say X tree, sure. X tree, and you smack my balls. <laughs> <laughs> You're a stick. Oh, be nice. Oh, my son doesn't stand a chance. The whole world's gone gay. Oh, my God. What's happening now? We work hard. We play hard. Everybody All right. So this story comes from Vanity Fair. John Oliver's gay bunny book is outselling the mice. Mike Pence book that it's trolling. Um, so this book, you can't even get this book. Um, this is the Marlon Bundo book. Marlon Bundo. I think that's great. I gotta say, Marlon Bundo. That's Pence's idea, or is, yeah, whatever. That's that's his yeah. actual. Like this is based on Mike Pence's actual pet rabbit. <laughs> his pet rabbit's name is Marlon. Bundo. I love the pet name. I love it. I think that's. I think that's <laughs> awesome. His cat's name's Meow Tse Tong. <laughs> <laughs> or Kitler. Either oh, one. Kitler. Either one. Kitler. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So this is this is one of those things. This is sort of like, you know, like when you donate to Planned Parenthood and then you put like from Mike Pence and then you yeah. put his address on there. So all the literature goes like the sure. fucking thank you yeah. card at Christmas. Yeah. I love I love when these guys have these um and and Mike Pence the, the reason this is being done is the the John Oliver book is is an LGBTQ friendly book, sure. right? So and it's a children's book. And obviously Mike Pence is I mean not obviously, maybe you don't know this, but if you don't even living in Iraq, Mike Pence is known for being an LGBTQ bigot. Like yeah. he's bigoted against absolutely. that whole community absolutely. and, absolutely. and people. So um trolling career, him with it. Just look at his career. You don't that's not it's I mean yeah, just, it's not a controversial you, you, it's just not a controversial right? stance. Yeah, that's, I would tell yeah, him that. Yeah, absolutely. Like if Mike Pence were in studio, my first question would be why are you, why are you a bigot? Yeah, why is it fun you, being yeah. a bigot? <laughs> why are you in the studio? Do they is that is that white hair? Like, when, did you get the white hair because you're a bigot or was that like a gift from the bigot club? Like, what <laughs> right? is it? What is that about? I mean, you, it, might, it might also be possible to say you're obviously closeted because <laughs> nobody else would care this much. You're obviously closeted. Nobody yeah. else would care this it's true. much. It's true. Right? You'd much rather be saying father than mother. Wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't you? Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Is your hair Daddy white? Daddy's more like it. <laughs> Anyway, he's got this book. It was, uh, and so John Oliver creates a book and that book then immediately rockets to number one. <laughs> over number, over fourth place. Yeah, Mike, fourth Mike Pence's place. book yeah. is in fourth place. Yeah. You can't even buy this thing. Really? It's sold it's the sold fuck out. out. It's sold yeah, out. It's yeah. sold the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to make great. new ones too. I, you know, I think the worst part about having a rabbit as a gay lover is they always try to like jump completely into the hole. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like they're trying to put their whole body in That's there. That's the worst yeah. part. Well, that and have you seen rabbits? Fuck. It's like, it's like, and they're done. It's that and the, the nibbling of the carrot might be, that is you know what I mean? Old. Like, like, you know, no teeth. Know, that's why, it. that's why I try to fuck women that I like, you can take their dentures out. I think that that is <laughs> sort of where you want to be. No nibble. Yeah. And, or if, if it is a nibble, it's just a nibble. Martha like can't Stewart, call me. <laughs> it's all been worse, I guess, to have a straight rabbit as a partner because when she get she gets pregnant it dies you know what i mean <laughs> abortions for all 
Very well. No abortions for anyone. Hmm. Abortions for some, miniature American flags for others. I thought this was a really interesting article. This is from ABC News. Abortion rates go down when countries make it legal. Countries with stricter abortion laws have higher abortion rates. That seems obvious, though, doesn't it? Why would why would the abortion rate go down? Well, uh, so what makes that up? So for me, what jumped out at me was initially like, if you have a country that's willing to allow abortion, you probably also have a country that's a lot more free with contraception. Contraception. Oh, I see. Yeah. You probably don't have a country. So it's all the that other has, things that yeah, can come. It's all the other things that that have right. to happen, right? They buy, maybe they have prohibitions against child marriage. Maybe they have you oh, know, religion. It isn't part of that prohibition of contraception right. they normally have. So there's some other, like there's some other things I think that the reason why abortion rates or, or why countries would have no or allow abortion mean that I think that they have to necessarily be less religious. I see. So so it's 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 the sort of accompanying progressive factors around a country that has around a secular country, right? Because look at what Ireland. Ireland's a very progressive company, a country, you know, pretty right. progressive country. Right. That's true. It just also is not a place that you can get an abortion. Yeah, that's true. Because it's crazy. Uh, that's, that's weird though, because all of Dublin is an abortion. So you would think that is true. God, if they had a vacuum there, oh. what would that do for that city? Huh? It, you just, could just, you could just vacuum right up. The it poop. would be the right only on the thing street. that's you ever been cleaned in all of Dublin. If there was one vacuum if they had one paper towel they just, in all of dublin yeah. it would be a fucking christmas miracle <laughs> just one they, it's a they showed a picture of a place that was that like had kegs or whatever lined up outside before saint patrick's day over mm -hmm. there and it's just the whole street was just lined with kegs getting ready for like one night or whatever oh. it's unreal can you imagine being I, on that street I that literally we were at cannot. in dublin i literally cannot on saint patrick's I day i literally cannot no i I, I couldn't imagine it. We were in there in fucking like October. October. <laughs> we were like on a weekday in October. It still smelled. I don't it know did. how that's possible. Yeah. It was it was chilly and wet and still smelled like stale beer, piss, and vomit. And abortions. And abortions. Yeah. Because you can get a street abortion in <laughs> Dublin. With a coat hanger. <laughs> you get a green beer and a coat hanger. Here Top you go. of the morning to oh, you. Oh, here you go, you beautiful lad. Here have you go. Here's your little baby on a wire hanger. <laughs> I made a mobile out of them. Look at them. They're beautiful they are. Uh, Jesus, Mary that's, and Joseph. That's, that's what, their names of the aborted babies. That's Jesus, why they, Mary and they Joseph. don't let them do it because Irish people aborting things would be hilarious. <laughs> Like the comedic value is just too it's high. Too we good. can't. The doctor's trying to do it. He's just laughing. Oh, His hands all funny. shake. He's like, I perforated your uterus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You kind of went a little Scottish. I did. There, I get confused. You I get got mixed a little up. Scottish there. It's all then. emerald. Yeah. It's all emerald. <laughs> we, Lord, we just ask to, to be covered with the blood of Jesus. Open hearts, Lord. Open hearts. All right. This story is from Ross' story. Two year old girl dies after parents treat her pneumonia with prayers and anointing oil mm. instead of medicine. So this is very similar to what it sounds like. Now, I will say... One out of ten doctors <laughs> recommends oil. <laughs> Scroll down. Shoot that doctor in the face, actually. Right? Yeah. The reason I really like this article is the very last line in this article. Oh, yeah. Uh, authorities said at the time the children would be good. kept together and placed with a family that believes in medicine. <laughs> I saw that Believes too. in medicine. I saw that, too. Hey, uh, I saw low that bar too, ask man. here. Do you believe in medicine? Yeah. I don't actually have to. Medicine's real. Yeah. Whether we believe it or not. Like, it's not like, it's like, if, it's not like I'm going to take antibiotics and be like, oh, I just, I believed. And yeah, so that's sure. why the I Cipro thought, worked, right? I thought real hard. And that's why the amoxicillin did its yeah, work. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, because the fuck on. So this, this kid, it, it, the, the kid gets sick. The, the doctors say that, um, I want to read a part of this. It right. says a forensic pathologist who performed the autopsy testified in a previous hearing that this child would have been able would have been fighting to breathe and coughing uncontrollably due to pneumonia. And he told the court that any reasonable person would have concluded that she needed medical care. Yeah. I, I actually, I will say like, I love these cases because when they happen and people go to fucking jail for this and have their kids taken away from them, it highlights the absurdity of this shit. Yeah. Right. So I never want this to happen, but there are some States, Utah, and we talked about this yeah. in, in, in other episodes, 
there are some states where this shit happens rampantly. Yeah. Happens Absolutely all the time. rampantly. It's all the time. And there needs to be not only a legal stigma around this garbage, but there needs to be a social stigma around this garbage, yeah. no matter what religious community you're a part of. Yeah. Like these are kids. Yeah. They're human beings. They're yeah. in your fucking care only for a handful of years until you domesticate yeah. them and then release them into the fucking world. The reason why they're in your care is because <clears throat> they can't take care of themselves. Right. And you're entrusted. That's your responsibility. Yeah. And you should bear every responsibility if you are negligent. And this is pure negligence. It's just pure negligence on their part. And it's been pure negligence for years. And there's some places, like you say, that people get away with it. Yeah. They get away with it. Yeah. They walk away and they say, whoopsie doodle. And then they still have fucking 65 fucking kids at home tilling the fields or and whatever. And that shit I don't understand either. It's like, you you already fucked up with this once. Like, they yeah. should take all your kids away forever and sterilize you. That's it. Like, you can't handle this. You shouldn't be able to do this anymore. Like, I feel like if I got, if I went out to the to the pound and I, I adopted a dog... And then I beat that dog to death and I went back to the pound and the pound knew like the, in this case, the government, right? Sure. The pound knew that I fucking starved that dog or beat that dog or whatever. They're not going to let me get another fucking dog. Sure. Right. But like we have this thing with, with parents where we yeah. revere this nonsensical idea that everybody who can fuck is going to end up being a fine parent, right? Or has the tools or has the, uh, you know, mental and emotional wherewithal to do this well, or the intellectual capability to do this well. There are some people who demonstrate to us. They demonstrate to us. They can't do the work. Yeah. And then we're just like, well, can you stick your dick in her? Because yeah. if you can, you can just make mores of them. Tell you what, it's fucking the easiest thing in the world to do. Right. And the hard fucking thing to have to deal with the consequences. It's, right. Yeah. Right. And we expect that everybody should just be able to just deal with the consequences with, I mean, very little supervision, it turns out. Even in cases, and don't get me wrong, like, I don't want the government supervising. Absolutely not. People, I don't. I understand. You know, right? I but like, it. if you demonstrate that you can't keep one alive, yeah. then like, they just take the others. Yeah. That's it. Right. And there then should, you're not allowed there, to have it There's got to be some sort of safeguard because those kids, you know, they're they're expecting the parent to take care of them in the one case. Well, the government's got to step in if the parent can't do it. And you've proven that the parent can't I do it. I feel like with kids, there should be like a one strike rule, right? Like, I mean, for, for sure. the big stuff, right? For the really big stuff. For the really yeah. big stuff. I'm not one talking of them about. dies. Right. That's a one strike. Yeah. yeah. You know, you beat the shit out of yeah. them. You sexually hur uh, abuse them. Like, yeah. that sort of stuff. Like, why is there another opportunity to fuck that up? Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, why is that? Yeah. I wonder though, like, you know, maybe there's been studies on their part that show that, you know, kids taken away from parents wind up in worse condition than if they go back to a parent that might be able to be rehabilitated. You know what I mean? Like, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, like, I do. I yeah. do. I just like, if that study, if that study shows that, then I would support that. Right. You know, absolutely. I would, I would support the results of that if the study yeah. showed that, you know, I just, what I worry about is that we... Um, revere because I, I I feel like culturally we do we revere the parent yeah as this sort of um on high role oh it's a mom oh it's a dad like as if that suggests something virtuous about the person well that person didn't change yeah if they were a shitty person there's there's nothing that suggests that there's not going to be a shitty mom sure. or a shitty yeah, dad for there's sure. plenty of them yeah you know now they're just under more stress and less sleep yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Better like, chance of them being shitty. When did that ever help? Yeah. When were we like, oh, you're a shitty person when you could take a nap at three in the afternoon? I bet when you haven't slept in two days, yeah. you'll be you're probably, you're fucking out of money. You'll be a real gem awesome. to be around. Probably awesome. No. <laughs> I don't. You won't be doing drugs in the afternoon. <laughs> right. No, no. No. You'll be fine. Uh, you'll be fine. Seems such a shame that George, for all his brains, could never accept the fact of God having any part in the universe. I'm so thankful that neither of you ever got to questioning things the way he did. This is from the Washington Post. I didn't even hear about this until I heard that it didn't happen. Uh, no, the Pope did not persuade Stephen Hawking to believe in God on his deathbed. Yeah, no, he made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look here, Stephen, you believe in God or I throw you off this fucking balcony here, huh? <laughs> Forget about it. Monday, Tuesday, Friday. Yeah. <clears throat> Fucking Stephen Hawking is sitting there with the Pope. It's so funny. When I read this article, I was like, why would he even go to the Vatican? And it's because he was part of a, a council for many, many years 
that went to visit the Vatican and try to teach them about science. And I'm like, what the fuck did they learn in the meantime? <laughs> yeah, I, this happens anytime a prominent atheist yeah. dies, right? Yeah. There are rumors sure. that on their deathbed, they yeah. converted. It happens all the time. As as if like, and I, and I always laugh when this happens because it's like, you, it, let's say it happened. Let's say Christopher Hitchens, sure. right? Converted on his deathbed. Right. It wouldn't change anything. Yeah, it doesn't stop. Nobody, it. Yeah. nobody who is like, oh, well, you know, I had all these uh proofs that God wasn't real. And I listened to these debates and these stories, and then you know, I concluded that this wasn't oh, but Christopher Hitchens, you know, in a moment probably fraught with terror and changes pain, his mind. Change his mind. That yeah. will change my like it wouldn't change anybody's doesn't mind. Change anything. Well, also just doesn't change anything afterwards either. It right? doesn't change reality. Yeah, it doesn't change reality. Right. And and there's a person or many people out there that make these up. There's somebody oh, right. has to make this up. Somebody right. has to make this lie up, right? Somebody has to turn this into fake news, right? They have to make mm -hmm. this fake news story up. How would they feel if somebody said this, the opposite about Billy Graham, that yeah, he that lost he his faith, on his that, de that Billy Graham lost his faith on their deathbed? Think of how the uproar from their community if somebody made a fake news story like that. Like, right. And tried to publish that and tried to share it all over and it had to get Snopesified. Like, no, he didn't. He fucking jerked off in Jesus statue or whatever before he died. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> jerked off a Jesus statue. <laughs> <laughs> it's not coming. It's I don't not. know what the hell's. Why did they just, even make this anatomically accurate under just, this fake loincloth? Then he just dies exhaustion. Dies he's of got, exhaustion right there. So. He's had wood forever. Yeah. I can't get up. <laughs> wood. There's wood in front of him. There's wood <laughs> but uh, but uh, how would they feel about that? Like yeah, they would, they, yeah, they would be, be upset. They would yeah. be very upset. They'd be like, how dare you? How dare you do this to this yeah. guy? Because to them, it'd be a big deal. But to us, we're just like, yeah, that didn't happen. I, like, we just I find laugh it about funny. It. We laugh about right. it. Right. I find it. I, but it's the opposite hilarious. would be would be appalling. I genuinely feel like if that story were to circulate enough, they would be appalled by it. I think they yeah, would. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. Like if the story was like that Stephen Hawking converted the Pope and then the Pope yeah. died of a <laughs> heart attack. I right away. <laughs> Every pope though looks Fuck like he's on, out. looks like he's on the verge of fucking dying though. That's, Every single pope. It is a prerequisite of yeah. pope poposity, yeah. pope popedom, yeah. popitude. Yeah. That like you must be moments from your fucking yeah. death before the you dark the side smoke. ages you so much. Oh it really God. does. It really it's, does. You know the difficulty is staying up all night playing fucking hide the priest to the yeah. fucking <laughs> yeah, shuffle shell the game. Around. Right. Shuffle the priests. Round and round they go. Where are they stop? No one knows. Well, actually, the kids that are getting yeah. fucked by him know. But which yeah, orphanage should I put him in? Huh? <laughs> uh, 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 here we go. AK forty seven. The very best day is when you absolutely, positively got to kill every motherfucker in the room, except no substitutes. So this story is from Nova Magazine uh, dot com. It's really from fucking Right Wing Watch, but I found it somewhere else so that we don't always use Right Wing Watch. No. Magazine, <laughs> the official Lance. sponsor of Cognitive Distance. <laughs> <laughs> this is televangelist Lance Wallanew compares students protesting for gun control with the brown shirt Hitler youth. Because, okay. because Lance. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm still upset over the fact that 3,000 schools with children 14, 15, and 16 were organized by, sorry to say, left wing. Democratic uh, mobilizers. Why are you sorry to say that, Lance? Yeah. Why are you sorry to say that? Because you don't like left wing. I don't like what they yeah. had to say. Yeah. So were they though? The the student walkout was that? I mean, uh, clearly the student walkout was not a right wing thing, <laughs> right? No, but this was this was organized. It, what, what's interesting is this was very much um, organized from like the ground level. Like this was like a grassroots thing. Um, so. After the Parkland shooting, sure. students who survived that shooting, you know, they they got up and they made a fucking fuss and it caught on fire. That's I think that's what really happened here. Is yeah. Students felt um, empowered and they felt emboldened and they decided like, you know, hey, we want to be a part of this thing. We don't. Yeah. We also don't want to get this is something that's, that's near and dear to our hearts. So that lead is not near and dear to our yeah, hearts. No kidding. Right. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I wonder what started it, but I it's hard to always know the genesis of what, you know, what created something. But part of me wonders if it wasn't Twitter that really helped push this along because the day after that shooting, 
a couple of Republicans were spouting off. And there was a few of these Parkland people that got retweeted a bunch. Yeah. Because, fighting back yeah, it. fighting back on it. Like, you weren't there. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, yada, yada, and those sorts of things. And I wonder if that was sort of their their realization that if I speak, someone will listen. Well, right, because now they have a they have a much louder bullhorn, right, than, right. than was possible before yeah. at a younger age. What's, what's also interesting is, like, how badly the right miscalculated their responses to that. Because I saw some of that. And it's like, man, you're never going to win being shitty and arguing with somebody who has the legitimacy of having been involved in that shooting, right? That student who was in building at the time that that shooting occurred has inherently a more sympathetic viewpoint. Like, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even make a difference if you were right on the right. If every point you made was, was, yeah. was an accurate or, sure. you know, better summation of the facts or whatever, I don't think it is. But even if all that was true, like you're never going to be as sympathetic yeah. as those kids who just went through this terrible experience. Right. So fucking chill the fuck out. Well, it's interesting because there's a couple of these uh, people, and I don't know if he'll say it or not because I actually didn't watch this, but, um, you know, they, they say something like, you know, we shouldn't be letting these kids do legislation. They don't, they're, they're, they're too young to be doing legislation, yeah, those sorts argument. of things. And I'm like, they're not too young to be shot. Like, they're not too young to be shot. That's yeah, well, the it turns out in this country, there is no too yeah, young to be no, shot. It turns right? out there's not. No. Yeah. After no. Newtown, there's no, no too young. Well, there's women in Chicago that that die with babies in them. That's you true. You know what I mean? They get shot in gang violence and they die with babies inside them. So you like, there's literally no too, no young. too young. Right. Like yeah. not even here yet. It's <laughs> still, it's still fine. We it's got still one. on the table. We yeah. got one. Yeah. It's like shooting a doe that's pregnant or something. <laughs> And you got two for one. It's like a shooting a, a fetus in a yeah. barrel. It's a boat. <laughs> shooting a fetus That's in a rude. belly. She's not a barrel. That's rude, Tom. <laughs> but uh, I don't know the I don't know the right answer. I don't know what the right answer is other than banning guns, which isn't going to happen in the United right. States, right? I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that. And, and I've said it before. I don't think that assault rifle bans and bump stock bans and all that stuff. I don't think that that's going to do anything. I don't think that that's a significant change in anything. I think that that's a significant change. That's a good to feel good legislation. And yeah. that's all it really feels right. like to me. It doesn't feel like legislation that makes a sweeping difference. Um, so I don't know what the answer is, but I love the idea that these students, even though they're not old enough to vote. They can still affect they can change. still affect change and they can yeah. walk out of school and they can, you know, what we should be looking at is being like, oh, there's a bunch of people out there that want to be politically involved. We shouldn't be discounting them. We shouldn't just be saying, well, you're too young to be involved. Get the fuck out of here, kid. We right. should be encouraging them and be like, yeah, you know what? You can affect change that yeah, way. But it's it's so funny, right? Because like they, you, you see the criticisms leveled at young people like, oh, they're, you know, they're woefully out of touch and uninformed and they're, you know, they're, they're not engaged with the process and they're not part of our, you know, citizenry. And it's like, oh, well, we, we're really into this issue. Whoa, whoa. You be yeah. Tide Pods, you fucking yeah, stupid exactly. shitthead. <laughs> yeah. it, like, it, I've, I saw that same ways. thing. It's both right? ways. It cuts both ways. Right. And yeah. it, it's, it's like, no, I mean, you can't, you can't do that. You mm -hmm. can't do that. And you're never going to win arguing against a fucking child victim of a yeah, shooting. For sure. To be forced to have to go out and have their first experience of doing public protest, uh, in a sense, to raise a fist of frustration at government, feeding into this whole sick culture that we have on the left, of perpetual discontent and organized protest. Yeah, organizing a protest is a good the, thing. Do you remember the Tea Party, big fella? The dis dissatisfaction with the government and the raising of fists and the people marching around and the million people supposedly that Glenn Beck got out to go do stuff at the Tea Party. Do you remember that? Because I remember that. And yeah, I guarantee you wouldn't be saying the exact same things about that. It's just because you disagree with them. You don't like the pie. You don't like the message. Yeah. But like, you're going to criticize that they had an organized protest? Yeah. Should they have had a disorganized yeah. protest? You know what I heard? And I don't know if this is true. And I and I hope somebody in, in the New England area can let me know if this is true. But I had heard that during one of the walkout days that they had planned, the people out on the East Coast were getting hammered by snowstorms. And there wasn't any school. 
and they showed up to stand outside of the school. Anyway. Oh, that's cool. I heard that that's true. I don't know how true that is. I think I might've saw it on a meme or something. Mm-hmm. So please don't, if it's not true, don't crucify me. But if it is true, let me know. Send me a message or a news story. I'd love to see if that was true because that's what I had, you know, like that's sort of the buzz that was going along. Do you think this changes anything? Do you think getting young people involved in making a fuss makes any difference? Do you think there's going to be any meaningful gun I read something the other day that said that the millennials that can vote now, now outnumber the baby boomers. So it's possible it changes. Possible, right? And millennials are above this age. This is the Gen Zers. Is that who this is? I don't know. I don't know what they call them. Um, but I did learn this this week. I'm a Zennial. There's a new, okay. like 1977 to 83. There's a Zennial. Yeah. It's like a micro generation or some yeah. shit. It's all, it's all jibber jabber. Yeah. It doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm from that generation, even though I'm older than that, because that's who I relate to. I don't have any friends that are like my age. I have friends oh, right, that are yeah. younger. So generation. So you generationally, flux into I'm already whatever, whatever the other generation. I have the same ideals, the same everything. Right. You don't have to be that age to be that generation. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that, but yeah. it makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. And so these kids, whether they wanted to or not, have peer pressure, teachers, students, um, propagandizing them and making them go out and march. And it's so the students were pressuring the students mm-hmm. to do what the students sure. didn't want to do. They held a gun to their head. <laughs> <laughs> Still, organizer, of this thing is came out, and it's interesting to me that teachers, students, um, propagandizing them and making them go out and march. And it's interesting to me that they're marching about violence. And the main organizer of this thing is came out comes out of Chicago, where they have 650 people murdered a year, and they never once organized a march over their own city. You there are fucking marches. liar. You fucking liar. Every fucking all the time, constantly. Yep. There's organizations. There's marches. They march all through the the, the worst parts of this city. They're the most torn up by gun violence. Happens all the time. Yep. All the time. That you is have a no blatant fucking lie. idea what you're yep. talking about. Absolute fool. Yep. And the reason why he's saying is because the people who are listening will think that it's true. Oh, yeah. They will think that, that they don't ever organize around that. Yep. And you hear that's a Republican talking point that gets repeated over and over and over again. They don't care about gun violence in Chicago. Trust me, there's a lot of people who care about, care gun, about gun violence, violence. Yep. and they march all the time and they and and that happens constantly. Plus, it's also just a blatant deflection. Like even if what he said were true. It in no way impacts whether or not students have are, are right. making a different point. It's a like, red herring. It's it, a red herring. It, yeah, it means nothing. Yeah. It has no impact on on the value of those protests or the claims and demands from the protests. But they're yeah. seeing it as a political opportunity. Yes, right. And so while they're doing this as a political opportunity, Christians are looking at the news and going, "Oh, isn't that terrible?" You know what they should really be marching about? Three or four dysfunctional deputies who had guns to refuse to go in. If I wanted to make the argument for arming teachers and citizens, I'd say when you've got a government that's so dysfunctional that they don't go into a school when the guns are going off and they're the authorized people, I'm not going to look to the police. I'm going to, I'm going to. That didn't happen. That also didn't happen. It was one guy. It was one guy. It was one guy who sends quit. He was, the, the, the guy sends quit. And there's been a lot of talk about, uh, what that really says about the training of people to run into a building where people are shooting at you. That, you know, that takes a tremendous amount of training to get people to do that. Like people, see, teachers are not going to do that. Some fucking rent a cop is very unlikely to do that. You know, even the cop in this case was unlikely to do that. Guns and this is a great example of why more guns in schools it's is not idea. going to do this idea, right? Because you a, had yeah. a guy right outside the school sure. who froze up. Yeah. We freeze up. Guns are fucking terrifying yeah. when they're going off. Yeah. They're fucking terrifying. That's why the military has to train the ever loving shit out of its people to not freeze up when they're at a point of combat. It, it, you're going to do the same thing with like your fucking high school art teacher. Yeah. Are you really going to do that shit? Yeah. Hey, you're not going to do that shit. You high school art teacher is going to leave their fucking gun on top of the toilet paper dispenser and in the fucking bathroom, and yeah. some kid's gonna get it. Yeah, and that, that's it, what's gonna that happen. happens. You had mentioned earlier it happens all the time with yeah. with people, cops all the time lose their guns that are actually stationed at schools lose right. their guns. It's a it's it's a silly thing to think that just because a trained professional was there and re- and didn't want to go in, and in his case, he's even exaggerating into three trained professionals right. were there and didn't want to go in, that somehow giving people to non-trained, giving guns to non-trained professionals is somehow better. Yeah, it's, it's somehow going to fix it. 
And like the idea too, that like, well, your government didn't do it. Like it's one guy. Yeah. It's one guy. Do not make one guy emblematic of the entire governmental yeah. infrastructure sure. with respect to responding yeah. to these threats. Like yeah. come the fuck on with that shit. Yeah. It was one guy who had a fucking, to be, to be perfectly fair, that poor fucking guy had a, a, a moment of crisis. Yeah. He did not handle himself in that moment of crisis the way that we would like him to. But I think it's a very human moment. Absolutely. Like it's a very, and his life is fucking ruined. Yeah. He has been fired. He's been pilloried by the public and everyone thinks he's a fucking coward. And I got to tell you, like, it's real easy to think that guy's a coward when you're when not you're the not one who has guy. to run you're into that, that building when that people guy. are shooting at yeah. you. I would want someone to try to save my child. I would too. I would hope that if I had a child, I would want to run into that building to try to stop that person too. I, I like to think that like about to think me that too. too. I don't know what I would do. I, yeah, that's, and that is exactly the yeah. point, right? No, I bet this guy thought he was that guy. It's the reason why I became right? a deputy, right? Right? Yeah. I think I think we all think we're that guy. Sure. And I think most of us aren't yeah. that guy. President Bone Spurs thinks he's that guy. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Here's what I would do if I was faced with a situation I, I will never be Joe faced Biden with. punch Joe Biden in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, I think every individual needs to really be, uh, be protecting themselves as much as possible because the left is lawless. They create lawlessness. And then they raise up rebellion out of the very lawlessness they create. Wait, what? Doesn't wasn't the left like in power recently? Oh my god, what does that mean? The left creates lawlessness, and then they create Maybe what? He's talking about Violet? Lucy lawlessness. <laughs> I don't know. So this school, all these kids marching and having their posters made and organized. This is this is as, in my opinion, it's as dangerous as Hitler raising up the brown shirt Hitler youth and forcing them to become politicized and weaponized from age 10 to 14. Wait, we're talking about They're, Hitler. How did we get to Hitler youth, Tom? How did that happen? Because they were also a politicized youth group. Like, did like they the, walk out of school. <laughs> they did because they didn't want, they would, what a lot of people don't know about the Hitler brown shirt, the Hitler youth is they were protesting violence. <laughs> they were, they were they protesting were, violence. They were protesting the Reichstag fire. That's what <laughs> You're not, I know most adults aren't prepared to discuss the Second Amendment profoundly, let alone a 10-year-old or a 14-year-old. They don't need to discuss the, all they need to say is like, please stop, please stop allowing people to have guns so I can get shot. Yeah, I, I feel like that's such a bullshit argument, right? It's like, well, we got to have a conversation about the Second Amendment. Mm, all right, I'm, I'm willing to have a conversation called, I don't think the Second Amendment's a good idea. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm, I'm willing to set that to the side and say, what should we do next? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right? Like, take your Second Amendment, yeah. put it in your fucking box of virtue or wherever the fuck yeah. you put that because it's a fucking amendment and you can't get it out of your fucking head that it is this enshrined yeah. good as if it came down as a platonic ideal that we can never look askance at. Yeah. And fuck at, that noise. And the thing is, is like, like, in the one breath, they're willing to do that with the Second Amendment and hold it on high. It can't be, right. there's nothing you can do to it, you know. All you can do it is, is look at it once a year and power wash it and then walk away. <laughs> but when you talk about like the establishment clause, right? They're willing to take out, like pull their pants down and take the nastiest corn filled shit on that. <laughs> right. Well, he did in the very beginning, right? He's talking about organ, like we have the freedom to assemble, yeah. right? And he's like, oh, it's organized uh, yeah. protest. Like, yeah, that's, 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 that is as much our fucking first amendment, right? Yeah. As your fucking blow job to a fucking AR 15. Yeah. I, I did see a a, a, a a graph that showed like how difficult it is to get a gun all over different places of the world. And you can get a gun, it turns out, in a lot of different places. I In England, you can get them as long as you join a hunting, I, and I'm, I'm like going to probably club up, but you have to join a sporting club and like you also have to store it there. So like you can't store it at home or something. See, I think that's a good, that's a and good there's, alternative. There's several yeah. different places where you have to at least prove you have a safe or have something and in your home that proves that you're going to keep it, or you have to store it at a, at a different place. That's not your home. And there are several places like that. Um, several places require tons of background checks and you have to get letters of recommendation from people. There's like all these other hoops that people make, Others grow, uh, jump through. Other countries make their citizens jump through when they want to get guns because all it takes is one calorie of energy to kill a human being. Sure, you know that's all it takes, and that's a that's a huge responsibility. And the problem is, is in this country we just don't give a shit. We we'll give it to anybody. We'll let anybody have it, and in any form, all the way up into fucking almost bazooka level. You know what I mean? Like you got these we these weapons. Yeah, we can't have automatic weapons, but you know. 
some of these guns that you know you could just fire off you know are insane you could shoot um and they and there's very little recoil and the aim you could just pick up a new target so quickly and yeah. it's just i mean it's it's unbelievable that's the amount literally of firepower what they're you for. can have that's right it's, uh, the amount of fire firepower you can have is unreal you know in in many states children can legally own a gun yeah you they just they, recently, the, the couple of stores have gotten huge backlashes because they weren't going to stop selling to people under, I think Walmart said they were not going to sell to people under 18 or under 20 or something like that. Maybe 21 yeah, or something. whatever it was. Yeah. It was a number. But I could buy a gun and give it to my four-year-old. Yeah. I'm allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he can own it. Yeah. He can't own things yet. Mm -hmm. He still shits in his diaper. Yeah. And I could hand him a gun and that would be a legal thing to do. Yeah. He could own a gun. That's insane. This country is insane. This this is an abuse of political leverage through the school systems, which tells us the left will politicize everything from the Academy Awards to the Golden Globes to schools and high school. And only those two things, though, award shows and schools. Those That's are the it. only That's two the things. Only thing. Those are the only two things that, that people... Oh, in schools when people are getting yeah. shot in them. Yeah. Also, schools are necessarily political because the educational system is funded by the government. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. there's no way to have a discussion about that that is not in part political. Now, the concern, obviously, is if this isn't, isn't bottled up in San Francisco, this kind of nonsense, then it's going to be spreading across the entire fruited plain, and you're going to be going to your Burger King in Des Moines, Iowa... And you're going to have a rainbow-colored wrapper for your Whopper. This story is from the Friendly Atheist blog at Patheos. Head of Christian College, when you see LGBTQ, replace those letters with ISIS. So he gives some examples. I want. I, I just got to read some these of these. These are this, amazing. Some of these. These are amazing. These are crazy. All right. So he gives us some examples so we can see how clear as a bell this will make the issue. All right. Is everybody, everybody ready? He said... Something will become quite obvious. Sentence will em sentences will emerge such as these, quote, love is love. And ISIS has the right to love who they want to love. <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh, <laughs> hmm. The hmm. ISIS community simply wants to be accepted and affirmed. <laughs> No, they don't. No, they, they, no. Just, they want to yeah. steal people's children to sell them as child brides. Sometimes they want to burn men alive in yeah. cages. Sometimes they want to throw them off buildings because they're gay. Sometimes they want to uh, fill mass graves with beheaded civilians. Yeah. Like I think there's a lot of other things. I don't think that accepted and can, affirmed. No, this is a different part of the prince where they want to be feared. Right, And the first one, like love is love and ISIS has the right to love who they want to love. Yeah, we're not worried about what they're loving. Like, nobody is worried about ISIS because of their love. Nobody's like, hey, man, you know, uh, we're real worried about the guys that ISIS is loving. Just real concerned about ISIS's love. Nobody cares. And the, the other one, what right does anyone have to refuse to bake a cake for an ISIS wedding? Uh, I feel like if you know there's an ISIS wedding, you shouldn't worry about the cake and you should call Homeland Security. Yeah, that's just the ISIS on the cake. For oh, sure. God, I was waiting Absolutely. for it. Absolutely. Terrible. Yeah. I, uh, what I, what I love is that it's, it doesn't make any sense and at none. all. None whatsoever. And you could make it just as nonsensical by replacing that with liberal, by replacing that with GOP. You know, you could just make it just, it doesn't make any sense, period. It turns out if you just randomly insert different words into a sentence, they don't function in the same way. He's basically treating he's treating LGBTQ as a mad lib. Can it, can it, yeah. get, get, I'm gonna I'm gonna try one. Hold on. Okay. Love is love, and chupacabras have the right to love who they want to love. That makes more sense than ISIS. Hold on. The chupacabra community simply wants to be accepted and affirmed. It's a pack of chupacabras. Is okay. it a pack? What's the name? Okay. It's audience, murder? audience, what is the name for a group of chupacabras? Okay. Let us know what that is. Tweet that at us. Finally, Cecil, the question has been burning on my mind. Okay, right? what is it? What right does anyone have to refuse to bake a cake for a chupacabra <laughs> wedding? Does it have to be a chupacabra cake? <laughs> <laughs> So, Tom, I want to take a minute to talk about our sponsor, AdamandEve.com. Remember that if you go to AdamandEve.com and you enter Glory at checkout, you'll get 50% off almost any item, a free sex swing and free shipping. But we got a message from someone mm -hmm. who said that since we've had this deal going, they've been to Adam and Eve a couple of times. And so they have a couple of sex swings. Oh. 
I got, and they were like, what do I do? And I was, and my first thought is we didn't mention it on the show, but I want to mention it now. You have to play smash up derby. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what you have to do with your sex swings. You may have to angle things a little differently, but my suggestion is you find two door frames near each other and you get smashing. I feel like I would have to construct a doorway near the, like just like build an elaborate interior infrastructure. What you need to do is create a, a complicated zip line system. <laughs> <laughs> a zip line. So I'm coming in there. I'm coming in there. Please be positioned right. I'm coming in hot. <laughs> And if you want to come in hot, you can go to adamandeve.com, type in Gloria Checkout, get 50% off any item, a free sex swing, and free shipping. Oh, this is crazy from the Times of Israel. Chief Rabbi calls black people monkeys, says chess piece in a doily. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. The fuck, man? What kind of hat is that? Who looks at that guy is like, wait a minute. Now I need to take that guy seriously. Uh, <laughs> it'd be like, it'd be like if, if, if you were uh, hearing a political speech and the guy was in a clown outfit with a giant nose and he kept going, wanga, wanga, wanga. <laughs> like you wouldn't take that seriously. You'd look at that and you'd be like, no, that's a, that's not a real thing. You know how you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover. <laughs> That's bullshit. That's, we judge shit by its cover all the do, time. We do. Yeah. This is a circumstance. All right. So this is Rabbi uh, Shitstack Yosef or something. It's 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 Zach. It's yeah. Zach. Yeah. Whatever. So hold on a minute, because I, I love this. Shitstack Joseph was addressing Jewish legal aspects. It's a Yitzstack. It's like you make a big bagel sandwich. Oh, it's a I gotcha. I you gotcha. make it with four different bagels. And I would have one of those. Sounds so good. Can we order yeah. one on Grubhub? Maybe. Can we get one with corned beef in it? <laughs> and a schmear? <laughs> he was addressing Jewish legal aspects. I love this so much. Of the blessing on seeing fruit trees blossoming. Okay. During the Hebrew month of Nisan. Okay. Oh, Nisan. Not Toyota. Ooh. Toyota's next month. Yeah. He was addressing that burning question of whether one should bless one tree or at least two. Yeah. I mean, you know, your time's worth something. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, okay, I just want to point out it's fucking 2018, sure. and these are the yeah. burning questions Oof. that Yitzhafish and Shmashmo hear the toilet. That's what I said. Yitzhak. So, Yosef. in that context, the crazy context, worrying about how many trees to bless right. during the month sure. of Japanese automobiles. Sure. He mentioned uh, uttering seeing an unusual creature, which was a black person with two white parents on the street. And they referred to black people by the word kushi, which I may be mispronouncing, which in modern Hebrew has a pejorative connotation, and then going on to term the black person a monkey. Oh. Why does anybody take this guy seriously? Why does this guy have any, like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, he said something racist. Oh, really? Yeah. A moment ago, he was talking about how many trees to bless. And he's wearing a dress. <laughs> like, he's like he's like in a weird ancient dress with a hat that no one has seen anyone wear in 500 years. That's a hat you could have a spyglass yeah. and sight land yeah. for your scurvy sailors. <laughs> exactly. Look at that. Look thing. at that. Thing. Are you kidding me? He's like a mushroom man. He's like, he's like Toad grown up from fucking Mario. Mario. Yeah. yeah. He's like, he's like Toad's antimatter. Like, look at him. He's in black. <laughs> he probably stole the princess. You know, it's it's funny. You know, we're all fucking chimps. We're all chimps, right? right? You're a chimp. Yeah, I, I love the idea, too, that, like, that slur is most often thrown out by the least evolved amongst us. Right. right? Or, the, or the ones who don't believe in evolution. <laughs> <laughs> evolution? No way. Yeah. I ain't descended from no monkey. I ain't no monkey. That black dude looks like a monkey. You are a chimp. I dropped out of the third grade. That was hard. <laughs> hard chimp. There's chimps that can sign more words than you have. <laughs> but what the scriptures are anxious to say, it's far more important that we be spiritually strong as a nation than that we be militarily strong. It's not enough to be militarily strong. If we are militarily strong, but we are spiritually weak as a nation, uh, we are going to go down. And that's why it's critical, I believe, to have a commander-in-chief who is a Christian in chief first, and then is our commander in chief. This starts from Right Wing Watch. Jim Baker, God haters are working to remove all the crosses from Arlington National Cemetery. That's not happening. Don't touch 
God's anointed. Never. God's, yeah, because they slip right out of your hands. Right, like, like, like you a, can't grab them. It's like a pig that they hold up. Like a, slide <laughs> like a right bar out. of soap yeah, in the bathtub. Right. They're all anointed. Like, what are you going to do? You can't even grab them. You're going to see some things happen. You're going to say, my God, my God, why are people falling over dead? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would if there were just people falling over dead. Like, you're just like, what? You're like at the grocery store? It's just... I hope they die really dramatically. Like if they, if they have to die, like I want to like a four minute death scene where they like grab their heart. Like the guy from Sanford and son is like, Elizabeth, I'm coming. Elizabeth. Like I want to see people die like that. I want every single one of them to be like, soil it green <laughs> is people. It's made from people. We just spoiled that movie. Tom. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Don't watch soil and green. Cause it's made from people. Rosebud's a sled. Because they touch God's anointing. It's true. And it's even true. okay, I had his permission. It was fine. I asked Look, him. If it's anointed, probably means I want you to touch it. What are it. we oiling it up <laughs> like, for? Here's the thing. What are we the, lubing it up I'm, for? That the reason is the friction of the touch. That's why <laughs> I oiled it up. People who have blasphemed Billy Graham's memory. Oh. It's on the internet. Oh, not oh, his memory. Oh my gosh. Not his oh. memory. Jesus. When I die, I hope people <laughs> blaspheme the shit out of my memory. I hope people remember me wrong, <laughs> tell can't. lies about. I want. I, I'm dead. Yeah, I I'm want. Dead. I want at my funeral everybody to stand up and tell their favorite lie about me. That's what I want. I want a whole room of people. I want it to be like that big fish funeral. Right. Guys, like, and one time he fought a giant. And like that's what I want. My whole funeral to be. I want everybody to make up a story. Yeah. I like. Who would care? Like, I know. You're I want. Fucking dead. Also, like, but even in this mythology, right? Like, you're in heaven. Yeah. You're in eternal bliss. You look down and be like, huh. You get blowjobs by angels, like, all the time. No like, sexual just constantly. contact. What? What? No sexual contact. Come on. You're in heaven. In heaven? You're in heaven. I thought it was heaven, though. <laughs> That's very confusing. I thought it was just edging for life. It's just edging for heaven. <laughs> just, ah, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> Right at the moment of the heat death of the universe, you pop. <laughs> and it starts back up again. That's the big bang. That's the second big well, bang. Medium bang. <laughs> Nobody's ever been that gracious to me. It was an okay bang. Good game. No, that. Oh, sick. They're so sick. sick in America that they don't respect anything. Right. They don't respect God. No. It's because there's no God. Yeah. Again. You know, like, look, like things either need to, one, they need to exist, or two, they need to deserve the respect. I think there's two real simple prerequisites. Right. Like, the thing is, like, I don't disrespect God. Yeah, I don't care. Right? I don't disrespect, you know, unicorns. Like, I don't, that's not a thing. <laughs> Fuck unicorns, man. I don't, you know, like, I fucking don't. Fucking Pegasi and unicorns. Like, I'm not disrespecting fucking Harry and the Hendersons. Like, it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. They're, you know what they're talking about they're going to do now? They're going to remove all the crosses mm -hmm. at the Great Cemetery in Washington. <gasps> in where? Oh, that would be Washington. Oh, Washington. In Washington. Washington. That's spelled W A R idiot. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> That's spelled H I C K Washington. Also, they're not. No. Also, they're this just is not, not happening. Also, this is not it, a thing. It's, just it's not, not a, a true. It's just not true. Not a true. Well, they can't do that. Are you kidding? No, How I'm could not, they remove no, all the crosses I am not at Arlington? That's okay. where all the soldiers, it's millions of them are buried. The white millions, millions. of them? Are there millions oh, of Oh, you got to look it up. You got to look it up. Figure out how many. Millions how of soldiers. I bet it's millions. People. It's not millions. Buried. 400,000 people. It crosses. Our soldiers who were Ricky's age who died for this country. Did they Ricky no die for this country? Poor Ricky. Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> Respect for those who have gone before. There's nothing like going to Arlington Even Cemetery. Even the history of America's being There's nothing decimal. like the wonderful experience of remembering people who died probably for very little, little reason. Reason. That's yeah. a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of that was pointless. Yeah. A lot of that could have been avoided. I bet all of them, though, when they were dying, they were like, America, motherfucker. Right. And then they died. Yeah, I I'm sure all of them were like that. All yeah. of them died, by the way, bravely in battle and not mostly from disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a whole trench mouth section. <laughs> My goodness. There's nothing to respect anymore. 
Mm. Well, then we have so nothing we, to worry about then. <laughs> We're good. Our work is done. <laughs> you want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. This is also from the Friendly Atheist blog over at Patheos. Woman dies due to Gwyneth Paltrow endorsed bee sting acupuncture treatment. Oh. So if people don't know what, what the bee sting acupuncture thing is, it's very much what it sounds like. You take a bee... And you let it sting you. You grab it? No. You grab it by the face <laughs> you with, do, tweezers. With, with tweezers. You grab its face yeah. as hard as you can. Right. And then you touch its fucking little shaky butt to you. Right. And then it's it stings you. Cephalothorax or whatever it's called. <laughs> Cephal- <laughs> That's the only thing I remember from insects. Oh, and I got to say it every time. <laughs> That's all I remember from my biology class 500 years ago. Is thorax when and they first discovered the bee. When they're like, <laughs> this is a flying animal we call the bee. <laughs> Merlin <laughs> showed us the bee. <laughs> anyway, they grab this bee forcibly by its face and then they stick its ass on you and it fucking stings you and it probably hurts. Yeah, well, scroll down because I want to say, I want to tell people why the patient got this. The patient opted for the controversial sting therapy to improve, quote, Muscular contractures, <laughs> contractures, and stress. Contractures. I am not sure why my muscular is contractures a is that a thing? need to be. Yeah, it's a uh, muscular contractures, a condition or shortening and hardening of muscles, tendons, or other tissue, often leading to deformity and rigidity of joints. <laughs> deformity. Wait, so improve your deformity? <laughs> yeah, I had. <laughs> A- I want to improve my deformity. Is there any way to do that? I guess if you want to change it, you yeah, want to improve it. Have you tried it. bees? Yeah. Have you tried bees? I want to improve on my deformity. Yeah. I, Does I'm, it mean add to your deformity, though? That's what I, I'm I'm curious. shaped all fucked up yeah. because my this, fucking muscles are all... I got this weird googly arm. Ginger flobbled. <laughs> right? I got the... I got permanent the, it's hunchback non, in Notre Dame It's the Dame non-grabber. Shit. I need a grabber. Can you make it a grabber? Anyway, they get stung by these bees. Hold on, hold on a second. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Yeah. It's Was it unple- stressful? It's unpleasant. That's for sure. Was it sure. a little stressful? Did I ever tell you the story about me getting stung in the face? What? Did I ever tell you the story about Is me getting stung in the face? Is the bee wiggles its butt? The bee, it wasn't a bee. It was a, one of those mud daubers. Okay. That's a wasp. That's a kind of wasp. So right? I was on the top of this, um, <clears throat> like, uh, when I was a kid, we used to, we used to steal cigarettes from my dad and then, and we climbed into this, you know, like those pavilions that they have the other all over the place. Like we even had the first picnic, the only picnic we had, we had one at a yeah, pavilion, yeah, right? right? It's like uh-huh. a, one of these things where there's like, there's, there's nothing there except for a concrete slab. Now these are common in Illinois. I have no idea how common they are in other places in the United States, but in Illinois, they're all over the place at, at city parks. Basically what it is, is it's just a concrete slab in the ground with, poles that hold up a, a like an roof, A-frame. like yeah. an A-frame roof. And we climbed up into the air A-frame. My buddy and I were right. smoking cigarettes up there. And my dad um, had always told me, don't swat at bees. Don't swat at them. Yeah, my dad told don't me Don't swat thing. at yeah. them. Just leave them alone. They won't hurt you. And so the bee jumps out. The bee, it's not a bee. It's a mud diver. It's flying around our head. And it sounds like a fucking Huey Chell helicopter. <laughs> it's like, booga, da, booga, da, booga, da, booga, because it's fucking huge. And whenever they get by your ear, no matter what, I don't care how, sh- I don't care. You can be the biggest guy in the world. You're going to fucking move your arms and right. run, right? Like, it doesn't matter how tough you are. If a bee goes near your ear, you freak out. Like, it's, it's just a, it it's triggers a fucking, your fucking animal it's, brain. It's to get your fucking yeah. ASMR trigger. Like, you're immediately like <laughs> freaked out. Off yeah. to it. He sticks bees in his headphones <laughs> and he jerks off to it. Anyway, we, I'm up there and my buddy, as soon as the bee comes by or the mud dauber starts flying around us, he jumps. He just jumps right down. Yeah, he's done. And I immediately stay and I'm like, no, if I'm, I'll be calm. The, bee will, the, the thing won't touch me. And it spins around my head once, spins around my head twice, <laughs> and it lands on my cheek. And I'm just like, don't swat it. Don't swat it. <laughs> don't swat it. And I'm looking right at it. And it goes... Burp, 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 and it's swinging its ass back and forth. It's like, burp, dur, 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 and it goes, whew, and it fucking stabs me right in the cheek. I'm like, ah, and it fucking swatted right off my face. And then I fall off the top of the thing and land. And I'm fucked up, and I get up, and I hobble home. And for the next four or five days, I had this huge fucking because then they sting you like they evidently inject like 20 pounds of serum in your face. So my fucking head, I look like a fuck. I look like the elephant man. I got this fucking giant weird eye. Like, it never went away. Do you remember? Do you remember when uh, when the guy uh, 
Do you ever see the movie uh, Top Secret when he pulls the the uh, the the magnifying glass away from his eye and his, and eyes, his eyes are right side, yeah. <laughs> That's my eye. That was my eye. So yeah, it was fucked up. It was stupid fucked up. But I, I it's because I didn't swat the pee. I should have swatted the fucking thing out of my face. Instead, I just stood there like an asshole and it hit me. So yes, it hurts a lot. And so not a cure for stress? Um, I don't know. Did she fall off some high place? Because it sounds to me... <laughs> Like, it's neither a cure for stress nor deformity. It sounds you know, like it's... What it is, though, a way to die if you go into anaphylactic shock. It, it is turns true. Out. Yeah. yeah. What, wouldn't you think if you ran this place, you'd be like, we got a lot of EpiPens in here. What do you think you would ask people like, hey, you allergic to bees? Yeah. I've never done been stung by a bee. Oh. You're going to need to go do that somewhere else yeah. first. Right, yeah. Don't bring your first bee sting in, <laughs> in the sting emporium. We don't take bee sting virgins, right. okay? Right. <laughs> This is not, this is not, is this is your first rodeo. Yeah. You're not having it here. Yeah. Right. No. But evidently she, she, she died. There, she, fucking took, anaphylactic she, fucking died. she, she died from yeah. it. And it was, this is a thing that, that, that Gwyneth Paltrow promotes. Yeah. Well, I, this, this fucking get stung by bees therapy is the craziest thing. Bees just fucking inject shitty, shitty toxins into you. That's like it, bee stinging. Isn't good for you. That's why the bees sting you. <laughs> right? It's like, it's like, and if you're going to get stung by bees, at least go dig into their hive and get some honey out of right? the deal. You know get what some, I mean? Get straight poo bear like, up in that some, shit. Get up in there. Yeah. It's like a wolverine doesn't bite you to cure you from cancer. It bites you because you're fucking too close to a wolverine. <laughs> Are, you Are you kidding me? The fuck is wrong with you, <laughs> asshole? That guy was like stage from leukemia with like five fucking wolverines right? on his back. No, just, no. <laughs> <laughs> So we are joined now by Mario Muta, the author of Tiny Thinkers. Welcome to the program, Mario. Thanks for having me. I'm a huge fan of y'all show. So, uh, so tell us if our audience hasn't heard of your books. Tell them about the books. Tell them what you do. All right. Uh, what I did was about seven years ago, I wrote a bunch of science stories for my daughter Lila, and then a couple years ago, I decided to put them out there to try to see if anybody would want to publish them, and then I. Uh, we basically self-published the books. Uh, and then I went to uh, BEA, which is a book expo America. And uh, we got picked up by uh, a publisher there. So there's 40 science stories about scientists. You wrote 40 stories for your daughter? Yeah. 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 Oh, there's oh my God. I have four kids. I don't love any of them as much combined to write 40 <laughs> stories. <laughs> Jesus. That'd be 10 stories a kid. Oh, Sounds like a there, lot. <laughs> I wouldn't even read them all 10 stories. <laughs> I wouldn't even say 40 words to them in their entire youth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, 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 you probably would if you were from where I'm originally from, which is South Louisiana, where science isn't paramount. And you walk out of school possibly thinking the earth's, uh, uh, you know. Just just happened. So from South Louisiana, was it difficult for you to learn to read and write in order for you to write these books first? Like, that seems like a high bar. And do like, the alligator teachers wear ties? I think they I've always do. Wondered. I think they do. I've always wondered. Yeah. And like, like, yeah. are you righty or lefty when you hold the crawdad to write? Like, is it? I don't know. That's so mean. Ambidextrous in that, that respect. <laughs> It is <laughs> dipping a crawdad in some ink. <laughs> just, right and its tail is <laughs> flailing <laughs> and making your squiggles for you. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh. So, so I wrote six. Uh, I actually wrote about sixty books using a crawdad. <laughs> and only, only about forty of them are good. My wife <laughs> says the other twenty suck. <laughs> the crawdad loves them. Though. Right. <laughs> I love it. The other 20, like, ah, the only ones I excite, the ones that suck, I only expose to my kid, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> and I use the same crawdad on all of them. <laughs> oh, this man. pen is good. Eating. Oh, man. Woo-wee! That's amazing. <laughs> I guarantee. I do love also the idea that somebody would say they're from South Louisiana, man. <laughs> In Illinois, all of Louisiana is South Louisiana. <laughs> Nobody's making that differentiation oh, yeah. like, oh, it's from Northern He's Louisiana. One of those uppity Northerners. <laughs> <laughs> 
They are they are uppity. They got- <laughs> Oh, he's one of those three toothed uh, northern Louisianers <laughs> or whatever. Actually, the difference in why people differentiate that is because the southern half is a Cajun Creole culture and mm. the northern half, everybody's a has no tree culture. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Everybody in North Louisiana is a shade tree mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the South part has a little bit of diversity and culture. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, so so you 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 wrote these books. What are the you said they're science books? What are they about? So e- each book is about a different scientist, uh, like Charles Darwin. The first book was Charlie and the Tortoise, uh, which is about Charles Darwin, a trip to the Galapagos. Evolution is basically the, the behind that one. The next book is Richie Doodles about Richard Feynman. It talks about Feynman diagrams, so, nice. uh, subatomic particle interactions, but for a four-year-old. So I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not trying to make a quantum mechanic. I'm just trying to, you know, four-year-old go, hey, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what prompted you? So obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're from South Louisiana. You grew up, you know, in an area where science wasn't terribly valued, you said. And so did you feel that there was a, a lack of this kind of material for children? Is that what prompted you to write these books rather than find them yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, keep in mind, my kids uh, went to uh, a public school here in Aurora. So uh, it, it's also here as well, a little bit. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. we ran into it at, at this school. But the what prompted me for it was uh, I went to school. I was never inspired to do anything other than work in an oil refinery. So, so basically the general culture down there and the general idea that people have is I don't really have to participate in school because when I get out, I'm going to go get a job in the oil refinery. It doesn't require a degree. It does. It just requires me to be able to turn a valve and, and, you know, think a little and not be on fire. Most of the most time. Of the time yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Some of the right? time. Yeah. And, yeah. And, Cause and you're on fire the whole time. That's just, that's fucking slacking sure. off. Yeah. Right? Now you're, now right you're by just by the ocean. You just dive in. <laughs> but that's then you light the ocean oil. on fire. Right. I was going to uh, say, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. My bad. My no, bad. Stop. I Cut it. You'll <laughs> maybe learn something. <laughs> I Science. Yeah. Pick up a tiny thinker's book, Cecil. Yeah. And then for a girl, it's, it's even worse because if if you're a, if you're a girl down there, there, there's some people that, that look down at you if you don't have your I, I made a baby by 15 badge, you know? Oh, my God. You know, they were giving so, out badges for that now. But that is. Yeah, they got badges and everything. <laughs> I done got impregnated badge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, that, that's a, that's a stretch. But typically an, an educated woman down there would go on to be a nurse. Uh, potentially a doctor, uh, very seldom, or or a school teacher, so that they can stay at their little rural anchored area because families are a bit tight knit. Sure. And so I didn't want my girls to be pigeonholed in that mentality that you know you just need to do what you need to do to stay around here and and let them venture out. So right. I I I didn't just write them science books. That's the only ones I put out right now. Uh, I wrote them books about you know thinking outside the box or uh, stuff to that nature as well. That's terrific, man. I, I love the idea that you, you, you've you got this, these, I mean, all jokes aside, you know, that you, you go out and you start looking for books that have the kind of um, more complex, uh, but positive moral messages outside of the sort of very simplistic bullshit that a lot of kids literature is like real little kids literature is, you know, like stealing is bad. Like, and it's like, they, yeah. they can do more than that. Kids can absorb more than that. Yeah. And I recently had a, a article written about me in a, in a local paper down there and they were extremely excited that there was a, it, somebody had wrote a children's book down there that wasn't about an uh, alligator or, or a, a, a <laughs> mosquito or, or a crawdad. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's or a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that was a crawfish going. God damn it! I gotta write another fucking book. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like in the bayou, just like putting its fucking Pulitzer by the mud. Just like another one. <laughs> Fuck me! Somebody catch me in a net and pull my head off. Oh man, that's. So, a- <laughs> but the fortunate thing is, is, is a newspaper wrote a positive article about me in South Louisiana when I have a book about evolution out. So I think that that is that is terrific. So. So, all right, so you've, you've got these books. You've got the 40. It's a huge series of books. Um, they've obviously been pretty well received. So what, what, are, your, what are your hopes for this series? Well, the, the, the hopes is that all 40, I'm not going to, at the pace they're coming out, I'm not going to live to see all 40 books come out. 
Yeah. Uh, so next guys. week, they'll be out next week, but you're from Louisiana. Low yeah, life. I'm, yeah, from, gotcha. I'm from Louisiana. I don't live a life conducive toward living. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, eat, I eat what's called cracklings, which is like a pound of pig fat for a snack. So. <laughs> okay. All right. I've had cracklings. You make them sound bad. It's pig fat, but they deep fry oh. it for health reasons. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cracklings wonderful. Let's get the trichinosis out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it well, it's wonderful, but but it will kill you, Cecil. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Wow. No, how 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 fast are they coming out though? Uh, the books is, is just going to be one every spring and one every fall. And, but, you know, I'd like that pace to be picked up, but you know, it is what it is. I don't know the book industry as well as publishers sure. do. So if they're saying that's the way to go, then I'm sure that's the way to go. Uh, you, I'm just happy they're getting out. I mean, how cool is it that a book I wrote for my kids is on my kid's bookshelf, you know, yeah. or at Barnes and Noble. Yeah, hell yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now did, do you, did you, you said you didn't illustrate them. Did you find the illustrator or did they find the illustrator? How did that uh, work? I find, I found the illustrator. And uh, you guys, I hope you don't make a joke out of this, but, you know, glory hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I found an illustrator and he was he actually was a career uh, NATO uh, like commander guy. He was a what? military guy. Wow. Yeah. He wrote the Darwin book. Super excited. He was from Greece. So he finished the book on the day he mailed me his illustrations. He died. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. So, oh, well, I'm glad he finished. <laughs> yeah. At least he got it done. <laughs> you know, no, cause it would have been rude otherwise. That's why they call it a deadline. So anyway, it's going to be a series of a bunch of books. So you can't have one book drawn one way and then it drawn the other way. So, uh, and I had already paid the guy. Uh, so I just scrapped it and I put it away and maybe someday I'll put out a version of the Charlie and the tortoise book with his because it was done, uh, by painting. He, he painted in watercolor. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And so then I hired another illustrator who couldn't draw fucking birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was kidnapped. Jesus. So the first guy died. This one was kidnapped. It was bad. This one's buried in a hole in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Should I hire my 17th illustrator? Mario, we have to go. It's been three hours. The book still isn't illustrated. <laughs> yeah. She, so it was, a, it was a female. She, she sent me the book and I'm like, uh, oh, all right. Yeah. The illustrations look wonderful, but it, it's, it's Charles Darwin. So we need to draw some finches in there. And she says, okay, no problem. And then she sends back and it's got her illustration, but it's just got some like copy and pasted birds everywhere that don't what? look. And I was like, that's copy and pasted birds. You like got off the internet. And she's like, sorry, I can't draw birds. <laughs> <laughs> you drew a fucking rabbit, a turtle, you drew an uh, ant and a mosquito hawk and you can't draw a bird. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I I don't do birds. Yeah, I don't do birds or windows. Those yeah. are the things I don't. I don't do birds or windows. Birds the don't do windows either. Yeah. It turns out. <laughs> they do them just once. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and those two illustrators were foreign. So I, I, I go well. I'll hire an American illustrator to do this. And uh, she got one illustration in, and she goes, she said, uh, th "Yeah, this is too much fucking work for me. Uh, I'm out." <laughs> what are you? But Jesus, man. Who ended up illustrating these books? <laughs> yes. Going through illustrators. So now I'm in Veracruz, like Trump went through Mexico with a guy named Hezreel Cuevas, who I met through a website called Freelancer. And uh, what I did was I held a contest on Freelancer at where I paid, I think it was like $250 to uh, somebody who could draw me a cover of a Charles Darwin book. And I, I just left it vague. And uh, Hezreel was one of the contestants. Now, uh, he didn't win the $250 because there was one that was just freaking phenomenal. But the cost of me having somebody illustrate it that was of that year, uh, the the quote they give me and, and such was was outrageous. Uh, his was right up there. But his uh, his enthusiasm I and mean, he reached out to me separate from the contest going, I love science. I want to do these books, you know, and, you know, how could you say no when someone's that enthusiastic? Hey, I got I got a question. So you've written 40 of these th these books for the kids. What's your favorite one? My favorite one is Garrett Morgan, who was an African-American uh, inventor in Cleveland, Ohio. And he invented what is is to later became like the gas mask. But what's awesome about his story is and and I don't I don't veer away from the racism part in the book is that he used to have to hire a white actor to sell his products, and then he would dress up like an Indian, wow, uh, like Tonto, 
and to demonstrate these products. And so, oh my God, really? Yeah. And so, and because he was trying to sell stuff down South and, and, and he was having to do that and he would pretend he was an Indian from what's called a Wapoli tribe in Canada or what have you. He had this elaborate story. But anyway, what ended up happening to him is 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 a is a fireman. Uh, people had seen him demonstrate this, uh, but it wasn't a gas mask. It was a smoke mask. It was a mask, and it had a, a cord that went to the ground so you could get uh, air down there rather than in the smoke. Cleveland, uh, I believe, 1916, they were putting a new uh, water, uh, basically the water pipe that goes out to the crib, like you see in Lake Michigan. And it was underground. Well, there was an explosion. They went and got Garrett Morgan. He he and his brother put the mask on. And uh, the first rescuers went in there and didn't come back. Garrett Morgan and his no. brother ran in there and started pulling people out. So, Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. So it's a fascinating it's a, story. It's a fascinating story. But the reason why I love that story so much is because I was able to do it. I was able to tackle the racism part. And how many stories do African-American kids have with a black hero? Yeah, this guy yeah, is true. a real hero. You can say, oh, man, Batman and Iron Man, they're superheroes. Well, they didn't have any fucking powers. They just had nice suits. <laughs> Garrett Morgan, he's a superhero. He had an awesome suit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. Is it difficult? Do you find it difficult to relate any complex things to children? Or do you just... I? Do you just try to make it as simple as possible? What's your What's your plan when you do that sort of thing? Yeah, and what's the age range for these well, books? Uh, they usually list the age range as one to eight years old. Uh, the age range that I was really, you know, shooting for was the time that I wrote them for my kid, which uh, was, you know, between like four and six years old. And so okay. basically what I do, all the books are in rhyme form, so – I'll probably mess this up severely, but I'll I'll I'll, you know, I'll give you a little insight into how I how I do it. So, in the uh, say the Richard Feynman book, uh, he'll you know to explain how small these subatomic particles are, how small things are that that we know exist. It'll say, hold up your thumb for a second or two, and you can find out what a small particle can do. Billions can pass through your thumb without slowing, and they do it all the time without you even knowing. So. A kid can understand that. We have a Carl Sagan book, which you should see in uh, April of next year. And it's, you know, Carl Sagan, uh, the, the true story of Carl Sagan is, is he wanted to know, uh, he had a question, what is a star? He asked his mother. His mother didn't give him an answer. She gave him a library card and said, go find out. And he goes to the library and he says, hey, I, I want to. I need a book about stars. And the librarian goes and brings him a book about celebrities. And he was going, no, nah, son. <laughs> and, and so this is a, this is a true story. So uh, Carl Sagan, he, at that moment, he realizes that the sun is a star uh, from the book he read. And he, then he realized that, you know, if the sun is a star, then every twinkling light out there is, is, is a sun that could possibly have a planet, you know? And I think I put it as a, uh, Wow, Carl's mind started to race. Every star in the sky is a sun for some place, and our world would be just a twinkle of light when viewed from the planet of another star on that planet's night. So everything's in rhyme form. That's pretty great, man. Yeah. That's, that's really great. Yeah. So do you get to do you get to choose the order that they're published in? Like, do you get so is the Garrett Morgan one going to come out like, or is it out? Well, the Garrett Morgan. There's only two books out right now. It's Charlie and the Tortoise. And there is Richie Doodles. The next book out is going to be Rachel Carson, yeah. which founded the environmental movement. She wrote a book called mm -hmm. Silent Spring, which, you know, right. yeah. basically asks the question, we know how things help us, but how does it hurt? Which is an easy title for a, a children's book, you know, to write about that. The So I have a whole lot of love for the Rachel book that'll be out. Uh, that's going to be out in September. Carl Sagan will be out in April. After that, the Garrett Morgan book, or it'll either be Garrett Morgan or George Washington Carver, because we want to show that yeah. the, the, the series is a diverse series. Well, you said you had two out. If people were going to find your books, where would they look? Well, you can buy them on Amazon, which Amazon's probably the easiest choice for people, but some people don't like you know, Amazon's practices. But basically, I tell people wherever books are sold, if you know a bookstore, you can walk in. If they don't have it on the shelf, they'll order it. They'll have it in a day. We'll put links to all that on this week's show notes. Um, uh, but we want to thank you for coming on and joining us. It was a lot of fun to talk to you. Awesome. Thanks, Mario. Awesome. Thank you very much. We'd like to
like to thank our patrons. Of course, we'd like to thank all of our patrons, but we want to thank our newest patrons, Frobnob, Frobnob, that, SGU Trickle Down. And I did see this on Twitter, by the way. SGU, Skeptics yeah, Science right. Universe, just recently joined Patreon. And this person followed them from their old site to donate on Patreon. And they, they found the system so great and easy to use that they donated to all their other favorite oh, podcasts. Yeah. So thank you, SGU Trickle Down. And SGU remember, are job creators. Yeah, exactly. SGU are job creators. So peace, uh, 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 props to SGU. Way to go. Um, Mike, Greg, uh, Greg Seaman. I don't know if that's real. Yeah, we'll go with it. Um, Dustin, Baron Von Awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's Bear Von. It's spelled wrong, but I'm going to say Baron. Samantha, Ryan, Andrew, Nicholas, and Daniel. Thanks so much for your generous donations. We really do appreciate all Thank the donations much. we get. Um, you guys make Gloria Hill Studios possible, and you make uh, you make uh, it possible for us to hire people to make shirts for us, which we recently did. We recently hired a couple of uh, different designers. We're very excited. And so we're going to be having some new shirts hopefully soon. Um, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be having a, a sit-down talk about trying to get new merch and figuring all that stuff out. So we might not only have shirts soon, we might also have other stuff like stickers and whatnot. So, and also maybe mugs or whatnot. So we're going to, we're going to figure all that out and we'll let you know as soon as we figure it out. But, but there's new merch hopefully coming in the, in the near future. So that should be pretty exciting. We got a message from a lot of different people. I'm going to talk about JD here, but he's basically saying, look, I understand there's comedic value to Trump saying space force, but space, a space force, a space core or something is something that we really should be thinking about at this point. Several people sent in messages that there were either are quote unquote space forces right. now, or they're starting to train or they're starting to create this sort of new branch of the, of the military. Um, I also want to mention too, that when we were talking about it, I know I did, I inserted a lot of thoughts about how it would work in the sense like, um, astronauts like fighting in space and whatnot. And, and he did never said anything like that. I was, it was pure comedic value that we were using. Um, I was not really thinking about it in any way that was, um, logical. I was just, you know, it was just him just saying playing. stuff yeah. and I was just playing yeah. around, but I do recognize that, you know, absolutely there is something to this that, um, that is a very serious in nature that I want to make sure yeah. that we recognize. There, there's obviously, there's a lot of strategic value in the satellite systems yeah. that are up in space. Yeah. Um, you know, from, for communication and yeah. surveillance and those, the, the value of those systems can't probably be overstated. Yeah. So protecting and maintaining those as well as destroying those sure. of our enemies sure. is a real thing. Yeah. I just think Donald Trump saying space force is amazing. Yeah. And also like, because he says it several times and it's just kind of, he, does, he sounds like a fucking Goomba and yeah. I don't think he has any, it's not like he says in our defense, it's not like he says. I think we should have space force because I think there's tremendous strategic and military value in our satellite systems for communication and surveillance purposes. Instead, yeah. he says space force. I think we need a space force. What about the space force? Tremendous. We have the air force. Why not the space? Right. Yeah. So like, so yeah, just, he doesn't it, say anything. He sounds like tremendous. a fucking yeah. buffoon. Yeah. yeah. We got an image from Sakura and it is amazing. She drew a oh, corner witch yeah. for us. So we're going to post it on this week's show notes. This is episode 406. So check it out. Very funny. We also got an image from Don't Spam Me, Bruh. And uh, and they sent along this image of uh, that that's just a, a Pat Holiday quote from last episode. You got to check it out, especially if you're a Looney Tunes fan. It's very funny. We got a correction from Matt. Oh, this is time. great. He said, uh, Stephen Hawking is not going to hell for the history of time, like you said. He's going to hell for the brief history of time. <laughs> it's very true. Okay. Yeah. That's very you got true. got us on that. It's pretty you great. Definitely got us. Pretty great. We got a message from Lisa who told us uh, about an, an incident. Her, her mother is a dentist and someone comes in and has these really beautiful teeth and they've had beautiful teeth for a long time. And then they go away for a while, come back for the next cleaning. And it's a fucking horror show in there. And then they ask the lady, did you change your diet? Have you been drinking sour drinks? The lady's like, no, I just changed my my toothpaste to an aloe vera toothpaste that uh, doesn't include fluoride. Uh, <laughs> what do you have a sunburn on your teeth? <laughs> Can't you imagine grabbing one of those aloe vera things <laughs> just, just rubbing your, your teeth? Your... <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. Uh, so thanks, Senator. Thanks for Senator Lisa. Very funny. We got an image, Tom. This image is from Elaine, 
And it is uh, a trees and weasel image. <laughs> and it's amazing. So we're going to post it, it on this and week's show notes. it's a cross-stitch trees and weasel. It's a cross-stitch. It's amazing. So we're going to post it on this week's show notes. Thanks for sending it in, Elaine. Very, very funny. We got a, a message from Alan and it is a video. Oh God. <laughs> and it's, it, here's what he said. Thought you'd enjoy this guy on YouTube dubs over concerts of shitty bands to accurately represent how shitty they are. <laughs> and it's Nickelback. It's hilarious. It's so good. We were watching it. We were laughing it's our ass. It's so ass. good. It's just basically somebody, it's almost like if you've seen bad lip reading, it's, it's kind of like that. It's like yeah. bad lip reading. And they play the music really badly and sing really badly. I don't even know if those are the lyrics, but they're just singing like I don't know. random it, lyrics. I think it's, it's very up. similar to bad lip reading. So we'll post it on this week's show notes. It's pretty hilarious. So thanks for sending it in, Alan. We got a, uh, somebody made a montage of our Space Force bit. So this was from last week. This is, uh, this is Mosh sent this in. Space Force. <laughs> Tremendous. I love you, Space Force. Oh. He's so fucking stupid. We put lasers in space. Space Force? We claim space is long. Start eight. Uh, who cares? I quit. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> it's good. I like, the, I like the pew pew in there. Very funny. We got a message from Katie, and Katie says that she's having problems in Pittsburgh. Evidently, there's a group in Pittsburgh called the the Pittsburgh Free Thought Community and has 2,000 members, but the meetups are normally relatively small. Just wondering where she can go, like how to meet up with people and stuff like that. And my suggestion to you, Katie, is get to conferences, the bigger conferences. Yeah. You might want to go to next year, go to NanaCon. That happened in Nashville. I guess that's relatively nearby, somewhat, something close. I guess P Pittsburgh should be near-ish that. Um. There's also a uh, reason con that happens. It's another one that we've been to a couple of times yep. that we like um, the American atheist. American convention. atheist is happening in a, in a, I'll be there this upcoming week, but there's, you know, there's that's something to take a look right? at a pasta con. There's skepticon that happens in um, Springfield, Springfield, Missouri. Missouri. There's a uh, imagine no religion, which happens in the Northern Northwest part of the, like the States. I think it's Vancouver. There's another one that happens in LA. The one that's in LA. I forget when that logical one's called LA. logical LA happens. So there's, there's a lot Myth of con. There's oh, stay with that. Oh, well, <laughs> there's a lot of conferences you can go to. There's also some overseas. You know, we found that, uh, that even in Chicago, there's just not like, there's a humanist group that we met up with once. Um, we've also met some of the atheist groups, but they're relatively small. They, they don't are. they don't get together very often. So, um, so my suggestion to you is see if you can get to some of these cons. You'll get a chance to meet people. You might even meet people from your area. We got a message from Joe, and Joe's wondering. She says, "I was I was watching the news on CNN and watching a montage of Trump's finest moments, and I can't help but wonder how on earth America will begin to recover when this clown when this clown show is over." Basically. Are we going to be able to recover from this sort of a, there's this agenda, this vindictive behavior, shitty behavior. Today, he tweeted out that he was going to fist fight Joe Biden. And it's just like, I, I are still we, would watch this. Are we, I would too. Oh are God. we going to get to a point where this is going to be the norm? And I genuinely don't think so. I think that after this president goes away, I, I, I will be surprised and that and that's not so surprised that I'll like fall over dead, but I will be surprised if this is not a, uh, if this is the, if this sort of thing doesn't just go away and we sort of revert back instead to what was, you know, I think a more conservative approach towards the, the way in which the, the president deals a more with the stately people. president. Yeah. yeah. A more generally considered stately right. or diplomatic. Right. Standard kind of sure. president. Yeah. Sure. I think I, I would like to agree with that. I think, I think we could see. I, I don't know, man. Like I, part of me wonders if we will see the effectiveness of campaign styles like Trump's sure. re um, rear their heads again. You know I mean? It That's won, true. That's you true. Know? So there's people who are going to take lessons from that. They're going to say, Hey, you know, this was effective. It wasn't right, but it was effective. Sure. And so I, I do worry that what we'll have is a celebrity in chief again someday. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the thing we can ever get away from. Maybe that's yeah, something that we can't ever, that, that, but I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. I feel like, like this experiment is not going well. For, do you think it's not going well for, for their side? I think that they're constantly on the defensive because he's such a loose a crazy cannon. person. Yeah. He's such a twat that they're constantly on the defensive and they're constantly having to defend this guy. Yeah. I don't think you're wrong about I that. I wonder if they're constantly, they're just like at a certain point, they're just, and I'm even seeing some right wing people like today, especially when he posted this, like 
some of these right wing people are just like, what a fucking clown. We want to thank Mario Muta for joining us today. He's the uh, author of the uh, Tiny Thinkers books. We're going to post links to those books on this week's show notes. It's coming up on Easter. So if you want to give somebody a secular gift, a little kid, a secular little gift in their Easter secular basket. Easter baskets. We give our kids secular Easter Do baskets. Yeah, yeah, it's just they, they all like give a shit about his candy. Yeah, anyway. sure. Yeah. You know, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to get a gift for a kid, that might be a good gift to give. We'll put links on this week's show notes. It is episode 406. Uh, we want to thank Mario for joining us. So as a reminder, I will be at the Atheist Conference this week, uh, come upcoming week. I will be uh, at the uh, the American Atheist Convention in Oklahoma City. So if you're there, uh, shoot me a message on Twitter or shoot me a message uh, in Facebook or something or via email, and we'll see if we can hook up and meet, maybe go to the bar for a drink. I'd love to meet people who listen to the show. So if you're going to be there, come find me. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death and towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.